Okay, um, welcome. So it's uh, nice that uh, I think we are going at a good pace. So hopefully by the end of, um, or maybe before the end of next month, we should be able to complete the portions. So you'll have a little extra time, hopefully, to work on your assignments during class hours. Uh, so today we will uh, study chapter 15. We skipped that chapter. So just go back to chapter 15. We'll do that and then uh, jump to chapter 17. Praying for believers and the local church. All right, so um, let's pray and uh, let's get started. Uh, can someone from the online batch pray today? Okay, maybe someone who hasn't prayed before, please uh, unmute your mic and uh, you can lead in prayer. Please. Okay, uh, Sister Lucy, would you be able to lead us? Okay, I'm not sure if Lucy is able to lead. Someone else. One second, one second, sister. I'll, 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 I'll carry on. Yeah, just, one second. Okay. Yeah. Loving Heavenly Father, thank yeah. you, Master God, for giving us this opportunity, oh Father God, to learn your word. To learn your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, for giving, blessing us. Uh, blessing us teachers pastors in our life oh master lord to learn your word and team to bring it to action oh father lord we submit all us all inline students online students and e-learning students into your mighty hands father lord what we learn to bring it to action oh father lord let your word be sealed in our lives oh father lord jesus to bring it to action oh father we submit into your precious hands as we learn your word as so that is as we learn your word let it get deep rooted in our lives oh master lord jesus strength thank you for strengthening us more and more in our prayer lives oh lord jesus and also guide us to lead as a testimony life witnessing you to the society and to the people whom we interact oh holy father lord as we speak to others so, Master Lord, help us to be help us to be a blessing to them into their lives, O oh Lord Jesus. Help us to be uh, children of your heart, O oh Master Lord Jesus. Also guide us to deal delight and meditate in your word father lord jesus thank you lord jesus for giving us this opportunity in our lives to learn your word in jesus mighty and holy name i pray amen 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 thank you uh, sister lucy sorry if i just caught you a little uh, off guard there but uh, thank you for leading us in prayer so thank we you. sure um, so we are talking about praying for the family praying for others and uh, today we will see what the uh, scriptures have to say about praying for believers and the local church. So some points that we can pray for uh, other brothers and sisters who are in the Lord. If we go back to the concept of uh, intercessory prayer, what does it mean, intercessory prayer or intercession? Yeah, praying for somebody else. Correct. Praying for somebody else, we go to God on behalf of another person. So that is what intercession is. And that is why we can also pray for other believers. If you recall, we saw in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, there was um, a passage, right, which said that you pray all kinds of prayers for all the saints. So that means we can pray for everybody, different kinds of prayers. Okay, so today we want to understand what are the kind of uh, 
prayers that we can pray for believers now why should we pray for believers what, what are some reasons why one needs to uphold another believer in prayer i mean they're also a believer right they can pray for themselves so why should we or other believers pray for them is there any benefit any use so that they can walk properly okay so that they can walk properly uh that is what we are praying for them i'm asking why why sister do... can i say something yes yes sister get ahead. yeah because uh, to protect them from uh, black uh, backsliding okay so we want we want to protect them from backsliding um our prayers can can protect them is your point right yeah i suppose that that's what she means and uh, sanjay says edify edify the body of christ so true that our uh, prayers can strengthen uh, uh, people strengthen them spiritually uh, any other reasons why my question is why do you want to pray for a believer what we'll see there are many prayer points we can pray but why should we pray for the believers uh pastor even for their spiritual growth for their spiritual growth so that is what no what do we pray we can pray for their spiritual growth uh asaf what did you say uh from deliver from bondages yeah okay deliver from bondages that's true uh any other reason why okay so that you can pray for others fine so it is one of the roles that god has given us as believers to uphold or pray for other believers correct that's true any other reason why why should we pray for other believers any reasons okay so they can stand in their faith uh as i think even uh, diksha shared the same point so that they can walk worthy of the lord so yes there is a role that we have uh when we pray for others others are strengthened they are able to live their lives uh, stronger for god fine these are some of the reasons we will we will go ahead and we will see uh see one of the main reasons is one is we have to agree with god's word so god's word teaches us many things about how the life of a believer should be so when we know god's word we as believers we should pray for the church for other believers that according to god's word things will be established so one is we are able to exercise our authority you got it so when we pray for other believers we are able to exercise that authority in prayer and say that god let your word be fulfilled that is one second is fighting the devil okay because uh, we we know that the devil tries to uh, if you want to use the word attack or oppose or um, uh, stop every believer so other believers have to pray for them you got it one is to agree with the word of god that whatever the word of god says those things should be fulfilled in the person's life um, and uh, you know a believer has a role to do that second is to fight the devil these are the two main reasons why we have to pray for other believers now we may think that okay they are also believers and they can just uh, uh live their life strongly for god that's true to some extent that's true but you see uh, there is a dynamics or um, there is a um, like the way the the word the, the way the body of christ works okay we are supposed to uphold one another so if you go to uh, uh ephesians 6 there is the armor armor uh, armor of god that protects us do you all know that armor of god the uh, helmet of salvation the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness so when we study about that it is for individuals 
it is for each person right so when we wear the armor of god we are protected against the devil but you see uh, even when you look at the roman uh, army when the soldiers used to put the armor what they used to do is <coughs> there were certain formations so they will stand in certain formations in such a way like um, they'll hold the shield and everyone's back right uh, will be like you'll face the the front line all the soldiers standing together with the shield okay now what happens when everyone stands together with the shield is that the enemy no matter how they try to attack it will not penetrate isn't it so there are many such formations uh, sometimes they form something like a square with uh, their backs inside and the front forward with the shield then again same thing from any side if the enemy attacks it will not penetrate you got it so in the scripture there is something about individual praying so we can take care of ourselves in prayer but we also need to pray for one another it's part of how uh, the body of christ is okay so there is a place and a need for us to pray for each other and we must do it we need to pray all kinds of prayers now what are the what are the points which we should pray one is what you said they should walk uh, with the lord they should walk worthy of the lord they should be strong in god those are things we can pray what else can we pray anything else we can pray for them some prayer points to pray for uh, believers what comes to your mind sorry victorious life yeah correct victorious life okay victorious life uh, overcome the devil yes we can pray for that what else when we see believers what do we want like okay ha huh? salvation uh, but once they are a believer they already have salvation so yeah to know god better in a stronger way okay fine so once they have received salvation to know what is that salvation all about fine that makes sense yeah any other prayer you want to pray for the believers huh their needs their, deeds. their needs okay their needs yeah maybe they have some needs we can pray for that okay good so all your answers are correct now now let us see from scriptures what are some verses that will help us to pray for the believers so it is there in our notes first uh, we won't read through all the uh, scriptures just the key point that is coming from the scripture i'll just tell you first one is pray that the believer will not fall into evil and deception so we must pray that believers see we are walking strong with god that's great but we should not fall for that we can pray for each other lord keep us strong uh, let not the devil deceive us let not the devil deceive the believers we can pray such prayers it is there in the bible so pray that they will not be deceived pray that they will not fall into any form of evil we can also pray that uh, they will become more like jesus remember we said what is the goal of every believer's life to fulfill god's purpose to become more like jesus in our character in um, you know our uh, the walk of power so we must become more like jesus same prayer we can pray for the believers lord we pray help them to become more like you so maybe some specific area god shows to us we can pray lord in this area we pray that you will help them become more and more like jesus that's how paul prayed 
So in Galatians 4.19, it says that Paul prayed that Christ be formed in you. It's like, you know, uh, when you look at the mirror, you see yourself, right? But the way Paul did the ministry is to uh, see to it that the people become more like Jesus. So it's as if every believer, if you look into the mirror, you should come to a place where the reflection is Christ. Okay? So he did ministry with that intention. And so we can also pray and say, God, let every believer be like Jesus Christ. Got it? So that is a prayer which we can pray for them. Uh, we can also pray that God will give them revelation knowledge. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, if you remember, when we prayed for uh, the family, you know, husbands, wives, we read one whole passage. In that passage, it says, God give them the understanding, give them revelation about who you are. So to deeply understand who God is, we can pray that God, you give them, you please help them to know you better. That is also a prayer which we can pray. We can pray that God will give them spiritual strength because uh, it's not easy, right, to live for God. It's not easy to uh, finish the race. We usually say starting the race is very easy. Finishing is very difficult. Very few actually do it. So we can pray that God, you give every believer spiritual strength so that they can finish the race. They can finish the journey strong. Okay. So I'm saying all this on the basis of some scriptures here, just that I'm not reading it out. It is all there in your notes. So we can pray for spiritual strength. We can also pray that uh, people will be fruitful. Fruitful. What is fruitful? If a believer should be fruitful, what does it mean? Blessing, like how? Lots of money. <laughs> Then which, how do you see? Fruitful. Let every believer be fruitful. What is the meaning of fruitful? Yeah, you can try some answers. Okay, so to uh, become uh, strong in the gifts, the gifts that God has given us, the gifts of the Spirit, okay? Um, um, maybe even ministry. Let's say somebody is called to be a pastor, somebody is called to be a teacher, right? So different ministries which we all have. These are all fivefold ministries, but you have other ministries also, right? The uh, grace that God gives us for leadership, for uh, administration, um, for hospitality. There are many, many, many gifts that God gives us for ministry. So we can pray, God, you help them to be fruitful in their ministry. You got it? So that is what. So we are seeing different believers. They're all serving the Lord. You pray, God, make them stronger. Anoint them more. Give them more grace. Give them more wisdom. Give them more opportunities. These are the kind of prayers which we are praying for them to be fruitful or in other words, effective. Got it? So we can pray, make them fruitful, make me fruitful. So these are the kind of prayers that one can pray. Then we can also pray that the people or believers, that they will be perfect and complete in the will of God. So that simply means what is it that God wants? Let the believer live that life. Okay? Let not the believer go do something else. Take some other route. We don't want that. We want every believer to follow the call or the purpose of God for their lives. 
So pray that. Like even for young children, that's what we pray, right? We say, Lord, from a young age, help them to understand what you want them to do, what is the purpose of their life. In the same way, we can pray even for adults and say, God, help them. Let them understand why you have called them. What is the purpose? Let them not keep going here and there. Right? Let them choose, uh, select whatever you want for them and let them do it. So these are the prayer points that we can pray for the believers. Uh, and uh, we can also pray that, let's say, in some areas, right, the faith is lacking in somebody's life. We are observing that, okay, faith is lacking in this area, faith is lacking in that area. We can pray, Lord, wherever their faith is lacking, you help them to be strengthened. Okay, let, let them be upheld. So these are the sort of prayers which we can pray. Now, we can also pray for uh, specific individuals. You know, sometimes what God does is, He will put some people in our heart. We would keep remembering them. Why? Because God wants us to pray for them in that season. So maybe in a season, we are remembering again and again. Right? Like, for example, we are teaching here in the class. But maybe God is reminding us of one or two people. Okay, pray for them so that they can become stronger. So we pray specially for those students. That, okay, God, help them. Uh, or in any other context, like in the case of Paul, there were few people like Timothy, Titus, uh, whom Paul was mentoring. So even when he writes, or Philemon, he writes and he says, look, I am praying for you. I am praying for Timothy that God will strengthen him. So sometimes God may put some people in our hearts so that we can pray for them. Usually it happens in the uh, mentoring relationship where there is a leader and they are raising up other leaders. And what God does is it's like a it's like a special connection that God makes where we are constantly thinking about them and we are thinking, okay, we need to pray for this person. May God help this person, right? So for Paul, it was people like Timothy, Philemon. He was praying for all these uh, leaders whom he was raising up. So, but generally, you know, it would be like, uh, uh, I mean, usually like in mentoring, in leadership, we talk about it. Men uh, will mentor men mostly, right? And then women... It's safer that they mentor women. So that way, we, we are also um, sort of creating a safe environment where we can build people up. So generally, uh, you know, maybe for uh, some of the men leaders, God puts some other men in their hearts and they are able to pray for them regularly. Similarly, women praying for other women, raising them up in the Lord. Okay, So praying for people whom God puts in our hearts is also very important. Now, moving on. Um, uh, somebody said people can have needs, right? So time to time we can understand that um, uh, somebody is not well or someone um, is having a particular problem, uh, maybe some financial difficulty. Then you pray for that need of that person. So that is also something that we can pray for. So what is the main thing? Spiritual growth. Main thing that we pray is spiritual growth, okay? Okay. Along with that, you can pray for the needs. You can pray for other things. So we can pray for their needs. We can pray for um, uh, people. Maybe if they are caught in some sin, right? That is also something we can pray for. And we say, God set them free from that sin, okay? Or bad habit or uh, addiction, something that we observe, but we can ask God for deliverance in that person's life. Now, in the Bible, we also see that when people bless us, okay, uh, for example, for Paul, the, there was some money that came from Philippi. People sent him money. But uh, when he received money from people, he prayed for the people who helped him. So that also we can do. When people are there who are helping us, 
we can speak blessings upon their lives so these are all the prayer points now um let's move on yeah talking about apostle paul so apostle paul he uh, roughly planted some 20 churches okay in his uh, journeys and the way he writes about these churches is very very interesting so he always writes i am praying for you uh, for different churches he says we are praying for you that god would give you wisdom that god would give you knowledge that god would do this god would do that so he was always praying for all the believers okay but sometimes we notice that he he his prayer it's very passionate it's not simply that uh, prayer points are there let's pray and finish the prayer it's not like that paul is very passionate even as an individual he was very very passionate so in second corinthians 11 verses 28 and 29 see how he writes i'll read it for us he says besides the other things that what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches who is weak and i am not weak who is made to stumble and i do not burn with indignation so he is saying every day he is thinking about the churches he is thinking about the believers and he says deep concern meaning he he is very um, see once you plant a church you will understand from the early church that they never used to um, just leave and go yes they will go away from that place but they'll keep in touch they'll they'll see how the church is doing they'll appoint leaders for the church so they were always taking care of every church right they'll see the needs of the church that's how the early leaders were all the churches they used to take care even when they go far away so what is paul saying he's saying he's actually far away but he's saying i have deep concern for all the churches i'm worried i'm thinking about all of you okay i am um, what uh, what can i say you know i'm praying for all of you so he is expressing his deep concern and he's saying that the way he prayed is if somebody is weak he is feeling the weakness so can you can you understand what his relationship is with the churches he's saying is anyone weak and i don't feel weak so it's affecting him in a in a sort of a, a a spiritual way when he sees a need or when he sees a problem in a church and he also says if who stumbles and i'm not in indignation meaning he is getting angry when things are not going right in the church okay so that's amazing how passionate paul is about the different churches so he is praying with passion and he is saying lord if there is a weakness let it be corrected if something is wrong paul is so angry he is praying with that anger and he is saying i don't like it it has to change god you do something right or he'll write the letter and say don't do this be like this be like that so that is the way they did ministry not just instruction but even in prayer he is saying i have deep concern for the churches if you are weak i am feeling weak if something is going wrong i am feeling angry so with that passion as a leader he is taking care of the churches so this is the way uh, you know the early church they prayed for one another it was more than just a normal activity right uh, it was passionate when they prayed for one another so paul felt whatever was going on in the other churches so this is how we would pray for believers uh, any other uh, points that you want to share or any other thoughts i'm just looking at the chat here so i suppose uh, these are all um, the answers that people have given earlier when i was asking the questions okay so some points that we can pray for believers Lucy says uh, more measures of spiritual growth um then 
Sanjay says, prayer is powerful. It opens doors for ministry, ministry of angels. Uh, and Akhil says, family, life, and well-being. Uh, Parmita says, filled with the spirit or the gifts of the spirit. Sure. So these are some points that we can pray for. Now, uh, the next question that I want to ask is, what are the prayer requests which uh, we can make for ministers or uh, leaders? What are some things we can pray for them? For believers, we saw. So many points are there we can pray. Uh, what about, let's say, pastors, ministers, leaders? What prayer points we can pray for them? Should we pray for them or no? They, no need to pray. Leaders should pray for all the believers, but believers, no need to pray for the leaders. So that? For their ministry. Okay. Good. So that they can do good ministry. Correct. Anything else we want to pray for them? Good knowledge. Okay. Good health, okay. What else you want to pray for your pastors and your leaders? Okay, wisdom, uh, overcome in spiritual warfare, fine. Do we pray for our pastors or not? Maybe, yeah? Okay, yeah, we should pray for our pastors. We should pray for our leaders. So, uh, when we pray for them, we can pray almost the similar kind of prayers which we said earlier. We said, right, that grow in the knowledge of the Lord, revelation, uh, spiritual strength, fruitfulness, Pray all these prayers for them, Lord, let every need be met uh, for the pastors and leaders, good health, good strength. Um, then, additionally, we find that when Paul, he writes to the believers, he makes some request. What requests? It's again there. Scriptures are there in our notes. You can go back and read. His request is pray for boldness. You got it? Pray for boldness when we go and proclaim the gospel. So we can pray for boldness. We can pray for open doors. Open doors means opportunities. God give more opportunity for ministry so that we can touch the nations. So pray for more open doors. We can pray for, um, yeah. So I think mainly what he is asking is he's saying more boldness for the ministers of God, right? So in this way, we can actually pray for the pastors, pray for the leaders. Um, so yeah, any, any particular thoughts regarding praying for the believers or praying for the pastors? Persecution. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sure. So we can pray. So what can you pray? If they are in persecution, what can you pray for them? Yes. We can pray for protection. We can pray for uh, their... What? Huh? Yeah, their family, their children. Okay, so true. We can pray for protection. Let's say if they are, uh, it happens, right? Even these days we hear they are put in the jail and all. Then we can pray. Actually, Paul, when he writes, he says, like, if somebody is in the prison, then you pray for them. Pray for their uh, deliverance. So we can pray for them to be released. Got it? Uh, we can also pray for boldness because... The persecution should not stop us from preaching the gospel. But at the same time, we can pray for wisdom. Because uh, in the given environment of persecution, there may be a right way of doing ministry and there may be a wrong way of doing ministry. 
right so we have to be very careful how we are doing the ministry so that we don't get into trouble uh you know for lack of wisdom so these are all the prayers which we can pray got it yeah so any any other thoughts regarding these things or even persecution you want to ask okay nothing uh, particular i suppose Pastor, can you do something? Uh, sorry, sister. Can you please come again? Can, can I say you... something? Ah, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, we can pray for them for the financial help that they need for their yeah. ministry. Right, right. So we can pray for um, the finances that they need. Okay. So you see, one thing is, of course, prayer. But uh, I just want to add. a thought here so wherever we can do something we should do that otherwise you know we pray for the people that's good right but sometimes there is something we can do along with the prayer so always think i will pray but is there anything i can do if there is something we can do if it is in your power to do something then we can do it for example you know you said right um some a pastor if they are persecuted they are put in the the jail you know so i think it happened like during covid uh, when we were working on one project covid relief project so we were calling lot of pastors across the the country so there was one family in that family when we made the phone call the pastor was not there only their children were there so we, then we were asking them like what is happening what is going on and like the children were you know they were uh, crying and you know, because their dad was in the jail and uh, he was they were not able to bring them out and they were saying you know we are trying they've uh, put some application something you know working with the lawyers and to bring the person out something like a village church uh so uh, but thank god in that covid relief uh, project there was one category education support so uh that was the best we could do so we just tried like we found out what is the cost for the studies of the children because father is not there right till they bring him out of the prison somebody has to support the family so then by god's grace that category was there so we could work that out and then in some way we could help the children to continue their studies so when we see people in need especially pastors in need uh, it's good to pray okay but if we can do something i think we should do it fast don't wait so long to address the issue got it fine okay so that's about praying for others that's about praying for pastors so we can move on to the next topic oh we skipped uh, chapter 16 also so we'll go to 16 uh this is about praying for people who are lost so who is lost what is the meaning of that word lost people who are lost spiritually lost what do we mean in the bible when we say people are spiritually lost what is what is that hmm okay okay yeah completely far from god so usually when we use the term lost it means unbelievers meaning they have not received salvation okay and obviously if they are unbelievers they are far from god you know they they are not uh, receiving from the blessings of the cross and all of those things so 
when we say interceding for the lost it means interceding for the unbeliever so how to pray for the unbeliever that is the question now so here from the bible there are some passages i'm sure you all already know how to pray but let us see uh, what uh, the scriptures have to say so the first way or the point that we have to look into is that when there are unbelievers usually satan works to keep them in a place of um uh, like without the understanding about god so satan works very hard so that people will not come to know about jesus that's his job okay uh, that we have to understand firstly we have to understand that why are people lost there is one main reason and that is satan satan does not want people to come to know about jesus so what are some of his activities what he will do is the first thing is he will play in the mind in the area of the mind so in the mind what he will do is the bible says he keeps them blinded spiritually blind that means see they can see normally they can physically they can see but spiritual eyes are blind now imagine we go to an unbeliever and we talk to them you know what um uh, Jesus died for our sins uh, if you confess your sin if you repent Jesus will forgive you they may ask what sin i didn't do any sin what are you talking about i never sinned right so this they, they speak like that but you're trying to make them understand no you are not understanding see even if there is one mistake it is a sin Jesus has died for our sins and they say no i have an i don't have any sin please don't tell me all this right why what is happening the spiritual eyes are blind you're speaking the truth to them but they can't understand spiritually they they are not able to receive what you are saying because satan is doing something what is he doing he is hiding the truth from them even though you're speaking it in front of them they cannot recognize it that is known as spiritual blindness so people are spiritually blind because the bible says in second corinthians 4 verses 3 and 4 that satan blinds the people you got it he keeps them in a place of spiritual blindness so uh then what do we do right we need to do something to overcome the blindness that uh, satan puts on people so there are other passages of the of the bible where uh, we see that you know the gospel is the light the gospel is the light that comes to shine on the lives of the people so we want people to see the light if they are blind they won't be able to see it so you notice we talk about so much of evangelism we say okay go tell everybody about jesus spread the gospel but let's realize that this is a spiritual battle because whenever we go to share the gospel satan won't keep quiet yes or no he won't his job is keep the people blind so he will work harder to stop them from knowing the truth so when we pray for the lost or when we pray for unbelievers usually we talk about something known as spiritual warfare literally we have to fight the devil right we have to have a war with the devil to bring people out of the darkness okay so that is what is special you see when we pray let's say i have a need and my need is um, uh, a job i'll just ask heavenly father i need a job you know bless me make a way for me i receive it that's not warfare because i'm talking to whom i'm talking to god but when we come to warfare it's like we are fighting with the devil you got it 
so these prayers are not just asking and receiving from god there is another person who's engaged here that is the devil so we also have to um, like rebuke the devil bind the devil a lot of things are there how we will pray so before we go for evangelism we can spend time in prayer and we can say like lord open the spiritual eyes of the people we bind the deceptions that the devil is putting on their minds let them be able to see the truth of your gospel so in this way we are taking charge of uh, uh, you know like or rather overcoming the devil and then we go do our evangelism it will be very very effective so remember that satan deceives he blinds people so we have to fight him in order to pray for the lost now the other thing satan also likes to keep people in bondage by that what we mean is he likes to keep people uh, in slavery so we might notice that either in terms of habits people are already stuck they may be in some sort of a sinful habit so when we are telling them about jesus we are telling them okay don't sin come out of it follow jesus they want to do it but they are so stuck and they say no i can't you know i'm i'm already in this i don't know how to come out of this addiction how to come out of this habit so satan likes to do that also one is he keeps them blind second is he keeps them a slave so when he keeps them like that it's difficult for them to come out but we need to understand that that people may need deliverance they need bondages to be broken so sometimes when we pray for people you know uh, we have to take authority and we have to uh, uproot the strongholds we have to break the bondages you understand we have to set them free the chains to come out cast out the demons so many things are there to do for the people so we can minister like that when we minister like that they will experience freedom and from there you know it might be easier for them to actually accept christ so you see one is blindness of the devil second bondage of the devil we'll have to fight all these things to set people free third one is he will hinder the proclamation of the gospel so if we are going to proclaim the gospel um he'll want to do something to make it difficult for us to preach the gospel okay uh now how should we respond to satan's opposition satan will oppose proclamation of the gospel how do we deal with it how would you deal with it will he oppose every time we preach the gospel what do you think sister we can uh, stand as prayer warriors with uh, wearing the uh, uh, armor of god hmm. and we can uh, pray in the strength of jesus correct so we go with uh, we go with a lot of prayer right sister gertrude that's what you're saying yes sister okay fine so we can do that now one point which i want to share with all of us is you know many times what people say is oh when i do ministry the devil attacks me okay and especially when they are going to start doing some ministry they are very scared they say oh if i do ministry i don't know what will happen what the devil will do to me what the devil will do to my family uh, because satan opposes any work of the ministry but you know i just want to remind all of us whether we do ministry or we don't do ministry satan will attack because that's his job so don't put the focus on the attack of the devil do you understand because it's any way going to happen we just have to learn how to fight the devil and keep moving forward don't make it a big story that oh devil is attacking me because i'm serving the lord the devil is attacking me no 
even if we are not serving the lord he will attack that is his work but of course he will he will do more when we are serving god because he wants to stop us okay so let him do whatever he is doing we have to do what we have to do so that boldness that courage is very important don't make a big story of the devil is attacking me got it okay so let's stop right here 10 minutes break we'll come back and continue sure thank you